Oscars not on the show. This is our weekly podcast to discuss all things cinema. This is M, aka Mike, <laughs> here with you. I'm the president of Filmmakers Anonymous. We are UBC's only film club on campus. I'm joined by the club treasurer, Costa. What's up? Or Agent Costa. I'm sorry. I screwed up the intro already. Awesome. There you go. <laughs> we have. We only uh, spent like five minutes to, to debating that. <laughs> Do I want to do it over again? No. Uh, okay. <laughs> we we have uh, Agent Tyler, who is the editor of our show as okay. well, yes. and the secretary of our club. Mm-hmm. God, I for. See, yeah, look at that. I'm doing it. awesome so far. Oh, for two. Forget. Yes. Let's keep going. <laughs> I'm joined by Amber, who is our, I guess, our resident Monty Penny. <laughs> what? Monty Penny? I don't know. Monty. Monty Penny. It's just Monty Penny. Penny. Over over three. Three. We have a very incompetent yeah, M. <laughs> I get fired next week. I'm sorry. Yeah. <laughs> Man, we're fucking screwed. <laughs> <laughs> we're also joined by uh, prominent film members Sander, aka Q. Our uh, Q. Hi. <laughs> <laughs> we are joined by Steve. Agent Steven reporting Agent Steve. for duty. <laughs> you guys can do this on your own at this point. I'm, a, I, I'm giving up. And we're also joined by Agent Alex. Yeah, hello, everyone. <laughs> all right. And uh, uh, maybe if you guess by all of my terrible attempts at titling everybody, we are we're talking, talking about... We're talking about Men in Black? Yes. <laughs> yes, do it! <laughs> yes, let's talk about the film that came out, like, what, three, six months ago at this point? But today we are all joined together to talk about Skyfall, the latest James Bond film. But before we get into that, if you'd like to find us on any of the social media, you can find us on Facebook by searching UMBC's Filmmakers Anonymous. You can tweet us at UMBCFA, and you can watch previous episodes of our show on our YouTube page, youtube.com slash UMBCFA. You can also download full episodes at groupspaces.com slash Filmmakers Anonymous. Okay, so we're going to talk about Skyfall. Now, to help out our listeners, um, I'd like to open up with uh, our spoiler-free salvo. So basically, we all give a really quick opinion of, of the film. And don't try to ruin anything just yet. We'll give, we'll give, for your listeners, we'll give you a warning for when you should pause the podcast, watch the movie, then come back and finish the rest of the podcast. All right, so uh, let's just start. We'll just start to my left. Xander? What are your first thoughts about uh, I would say Skyfall. that Skyfall is one of the best James Bond movies out. There's simply too many, and to call it the best, as the trailer uh, vainly called it. But, um, <laughs> well, you know the, the trailer of the next movie is just only do the same exact thing. Yeah, but I, I, would, I would say that it is one of the best. Okay, Alex. Well, unlike my fellow uh, agent here, um, <laughs> I actually went into the cinema with a lot of enthusiasm, with a lot of, uh, you know, I was looking forward to the movie. It's, you know, Bond's 50 years, the 50th anniversary and all that, and I had lots of expectations for the movie, but unfortunately, I was kind of, like, disappointed. Mm. The movie did not live up to my expectations, unfortunately. That's, that's just my own opinion. This is why this is why Sanders Q. He's a smart one. <laughs> oh, <laughs> oh, oh, okay, okay, you're on, man. Okay, do we have to separate you two? Be no, it's fine. It's fine. It's fine. It's fine. It's fine. Steve, Steve, go ahead. I've got my right. eye on you. I got my eye on you, man. Um. You're cool, though. <laughs> <laughs> I don't, Come on, man! You could have even left the drama I, I, throughout the podcast. I don't, you're just gonna settle it right there. I don't want. The, I don't want him shooting me. <laughs> yeah, be careful, man. You know, we I mean, are all secret agents. Yeah, we're all a, agents of MI6 he's, right now. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. <laughs> I'm retired. Oh yeah, that's true. Yeah. You're just sitting at a desk. Yeah, you're a field agent. I, I, uh, yeah. I just flirt with James Bond. <laughs> she, she's the one, she's the I, one who gets to live. I need to make sexual harassment claims. Bond, okay. That all get ignored. Anyway, <laughs> um, okay, got sidetracked by that. Yeah, go ahead. And, um, uh, I'd probably it's definitely. I'd say it's definitely a good movie. Um, better than Quantum of Solace. Um, yes. Quantum of Solace. In my in my opinion, just below Casino Royale because Casino Ro- Casino Royale is probably my favorite Bond yeah. movie. Okay. Hey, so Skyfall scores just below it, but not very much. So. Mm. Anyway, I'll have something to say. Don't Did worry. I make a new enemy now? Jeez. <laughs> you you are course. striking out here, man. <laughs> At least I didn't make a mistake in the intro. <laughs> Three mistakes. Thank you. Anyway, go ahead, Tyler. Uh, so for me, uh, I didn't feel particularly like enjoyed or you know hated the movie. It's just meh for me. 
But also, like, it's actually the first Bond movie I've seen in a while, and I've only seen, like, the Connery era of the Bond films. So, mm. I come in, so I came into this with, um, you know, more of a, you know, like, open mind or, like, just not knowing much, as much about the series as some other people would. Which Connery film did you like the most? Just out of curiosity. Um, <laughs> Goldfinger. <laughs> it'll, probably, it'll probably either be Goldfinger or Her Majesty's Secret Service. Yeah. One of those. Yeah, but Wait, that, that was, was that too much with Dalton. Oh, was it was, was no. Majesty's Secret. Uh, no, sorry, Judge Lazenby. Oh, was right. On okay. Majesty's Secret Service. Okay, so I've seen Connery yeah. and that then. Okay. All right, okay. there you go. There we go. Okay. Amber. Hi. <laughs> Money Penny. Money Penny. <laughs> <laughs> Money Penny. <laughs> um. Well. Um. I'm not a huge James Bond fan. I've only seen a few. I've seen like maybe two out of like Pierce Brosnan's. I think I've seen Doctor No, and I don't know. Mm -hmm. I might have seen one of the the later, later like Sean Connery ones where he kind of came back. But um, yeah. so I liked uh, Casino Royale a lot, and then Quantum of Solace. I didn't know what the hell was going on. <laughs> um, Thank you. No Me one too. did. Um, <laughs> and so and so when the trailer for the new James, the for Skyfall came out, I was like, I don't know. Because <laughs> it looks cool, but I was tricked with Quantum of Solace, and that was a weird title, and what the hell does Skyfall mean? <laughs> and then, so I went in it with really low expectations, and then I watched it, and I was like, this is really awesome. And so, I think I like it more than Casino Royale. Hmm. And I know people, are, like, it's, it's, but I'm with you, I really liked Casino Royale a lot. Okay. So did I. But, for some reason, yeah. I okay. really, really enjoyed, uh, the storyline and the character depth and everything, the psychological character depth of, of James Bond a little bit. Mm -hmm. So um, I think it made it put it up a little bit more. So I I actually got a lot out of it because I was going into it with low expectations and it mm -hmm. became probably I agree with like it being one of the best James Bond movies. But I haven't seen all the James Bond movies. Thank you. That's but a, that's a, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, that's 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 actually very, very I haven't important. seen all the James Bond you know, movies and exactly, yeah, like, yeah. you know, I know I kind of like the grittier version because I know a lot of the James Bond stuff was kind of cheesy and over the kind top of. and <laughs> whatever. So watch the Roger Moore movies. Okay. <laughs> I don't want to. Yeah, I, I don't think a lot of people want to watch the but Roger Moore films. But I liked it a lot. <laughs> okay, there we go. And Costa, I actually really enjoyed uh, Skyfall. I, I probably haven't even seen half of the what now twenty three <coughs> Bond films. Mm -hmm. I. I've nice. I actually the the last one I'd seen for that was Quantum of Solace, but I had not seen Casino Royale though, so I made it my my duty to go back. And last night I actually went and watched Casino Royale, which I thoroughly enjoyed. But I actually give the edge to Skyfall just by a little bit. Skyfall mm. is my favorite Bond movie I think so far. I, I really really well acted. I think it's Daniel Craig's best um, job at Bond in this three movies so far, and. Javier Bardem did an awesome job as Mr. Silva. Well, I think he, I think, will go down. And, you know, when we get to what, like maybe celebrating sixty or seventy years of Bond, I think people will actually recognize him as being one of the best Bond villains. I agree. So far, yeah. I, really well done. I, well, one, well, but let's not tell anyone about one, it because we're still yeah. spoiler free. Well, I'm just saying. Yeah. I think excellent acting job from all those <laughs> involved, and uh, like I said, my favorite Bond movie so far. Okay. 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 And okay. as my own experience of Bond films, I started in the Pierce Brosnan era because I, I never really cared for Bond films, uh, you know, long back. And okay. in general, I don't have a propensity for older films. It okay. depends mm -hmm. on the type of film mm -hmm. that it is. Mm -hmm. Now I have seen some Sean Connery Bonds. I have seen some of the other, maybe not Timothy Dalton or even the Roger Moore's, but I've seen, you know, like some of the older Bond films. Uh -huh. And of course, I've seen all of the recent ones with Daniel Craig. Out of all the Bond films that I've seen personally, Skyfall ranks as the best in my opinion. Um, it was much better than Quantum of Solace because let's all face it. I think Quantum of Solace is one of the lowest films in what Bond is it franchise. About? It's about right, the Quantum it, it, of Solace. Exactly. That's that was the problem with the Quantum of Solace. I couldn't figure out what the story was and halfway how did through that the story. Blew up out of nowhere? Right. Right. And, it was um, it was just about some group <coughs> called Quantum and Bond is like girl. He's trying to find solace. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> it's you know it's supposed to be the sequel to Casino Royale, I know but it doesn't like really. It's like the first actual sequel in a Bond franchise. But it yeah, doesn't that's, really. That's actually uh, it starts right but it doesn't back act like uh -huh, exactly. very much like a sequel though. It well, it tries movie... to be its own standalone story with 
But it doesn't really tie it into was, Casino Royale. It was, right? it was, it's it's weird Royale. because it was too much of a sequel, but at the same time, not enough, if that makes any sense. So. And here's my other view, is that I did like Casino Royale. Mm -hmm. I thought it was a good step in the right direction from, you know, how the last film before that was Die Another Day. So, Casino one, Royale... One, one of the worst Bond movies ever. Uh, and, and that's a fair yeah. point. Yeah. That's a fair point. It's, but, um, it, so. it's terrible. Oh, terrible. But Casino really Royale, terrible. I thought... <laughs> was a little bit boring because it, I thought it was a little longer than it had to be. Oh, well, I'll, I'll agree with you it, about that. It had long sections of dialogue that were followed by very, very short action scenes mm -hmm. that mostly consisted of Bond running. And I put a <laughs> compilation video together uh -huh. of all of Bond running in Casino Royale, and those are basically all of the action scenes except the fight scene in the stairwell. Yeah. Um, so what I thought Skyfall did, it took the perfect blend of the new gritty James Bond and blended it with the old James Bond cliches because this did feel this did have a story that was more in the feeling of the older Bond films mixed with the new type of edginess, mm -hmm. in my opinion. Um, can I just say something here? Yeah, um, go ahead. I kind, <laughs> kind of disagree. I kind of <laughs> yeah. No, no, no spoilers at this point. We're gonna talk about that later. But I kind of disagree with you. The storyline, nah, 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 nah. What? You I didn't disagree like with story? you. I didn't like the story, and it's not. A classic <laughs> bomb storyline. Not at all. That's true. Well, no, no, see, no, no, no. But see, that's not one, at all. Not that's at all. one of the reasons. Well, see, not exactly necessarily email. the storyline, but I actually liked that it was a much more basic plot line than a lot of the Bond films. A lot of the Bond films involve some type of like terrorists, uh, and which this film did, but they don't really have a grander scheme. This was exactly. one guy. Was personal. Wanted, exactly. This was exactly. Personal. Exactly. This was one guy who wanted to kill one person. It was, just, you know, was I know we made these film. comparisons. Yeah. Right, it was a revenge film. It was kind of like The Dark Knight. <laughs> Haven't we seen enough revenge regards. movies? I mean, Quantum of Solace was about revenge. revenge. We'll now Skyfall is about revenge as well. I mean, come on. I mean, but what but happened to the good old Bond, I, you know, I think story lines? The best way to describe <laughs> Skyfall, <laughs> I think the best way to describe yeah. Skyfall is Skyfall connects new Bond to old Bond. Yes, and that's yeah. what it was that, for. That, that, right, yeah. right. It may not have been a classic like <laughs> storyline of, of old Bond movies, but I just loved all the nods to the old Bond. Right. Movies. Oh, absolutely. Like, that, like yeah. you, know, you know, even though I haven't seen all the Bond movies, I, I'd seen enough of them to know all the <laughs> nods and all the. Symbols right. and cliches, and I, you know, you just, you just get like this overwhelming feeling. Like, wow, that's like awesome, you know. And it's okay. it was, uh, okay. Okay. I, I enjoyed it. It was, it was, a, okay. it was we'll, a fun we'll two and a half hours. Uh, Can we get into we'll, our spoilers yeah, yeah, now? No, 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 I'm gonna I'm gonna do my damage. We'll that in a moment. Before we get into the spoilers, because we want to give our listeners who don't want to hear the spoilers a very fair review. Okay. We're gonna do a segment now called "Worth the Money" or "Worth the Wait," meaning. Would you recommend that people go to the theaters to see this film or wait for it to come out on DVD or, you know, uh, the other media? So um, I'm just going to start off with uh, my own personal view. There aren't that a whole lot of good cinema experiences out there currently nowadays with uh, floods of remakes and, you know, superhero and, the, movies. and superhero <laughs> films, yes, which have definitely oversaturated the cinema market. I'm going to say it's worth the money because I thought it was good enough that it's something that it's something you should experience in a theater. You should experience when you're in an environment that gets you into the film. Because I was really into it, especially by the later part of the film. And so I really enjoyed it. So I think, it, I, I honestly do say it's worth the money. I'm going to agree with Mike, but please, dear God, don't sit in the front row. That movie is so <laughs> hard to follow when you're moving your head back and forth the entire movie like we were. After, after halfway through the film, it didn't bug me. No, uh, I got used to it. But, I mean, we did sort of get lost on the way there, though, because we had to get rerouted. We were going to go There's to the Bronx Theater. Work. There was road work. Uh, well, at first, we thought Cus was leading us a back way. We to thought avoid. he was going to try thought, to kill us. We thought he was, like, leading <laughs> us to, like, a deserted alley to just shoot us or something like that. Yeah, um, so it was all a secret plot so I could just take over everything. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, but, yeah, it was, it was a mess. Next year, it'll be all costumes. But, yeah, don't, don't watch it from the front row. It's, it's pretty hard to follow until you get into it. Because I mean, you move your head back <laughs> and forth. I didn't think it was like that. Anyway, go ahead. Yeah, well, uh, I, I'm, I'm going to agree with you guys. Um, it's definitely worth the money. Um, okay. Don't get me wrong, okay? I, I did like Skyfall to a certain extent. <laughs> it just didn't live up to my expectations, okay? And like okay. you said, with, you know, the industry being oversaturated with um, very poor movies, remakes, and, you know, what have you, this, mm. is, this is definitely a good movie you could watch. So, mm -hmm. fair enough. Um, I would definitely say worth the money. Um, I mentioned before that... Um, 
Casino Royale just ranks barely above Skyfall. One thing I, I want to say about that, though, is Casino Royale, as much as I love it, it's not exactly something I... <laughs> I really, I probably should have seen in theaters, mainly because, uh, like what you said, Mike, that movie drags way, way it too does. long. <laughs> uh, that's uh, that's the that's I'll give you that. And, and uh, Skyfall doesn't do that. And so with with Skyfall, definitely something I recommend seeing in theaters, especially since Fifty Years of Bond. And not on. to divert too much, oh. but but also that Casino Royale felt like it was kind of two stories. Yeah, we it, had the whole poker story and the main villain story, mm-hmm. and then for the last. What uh-huh. half hour? The last half of the uh-huh. film uh-huh. 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 is all about him and the girl. Uh-huh. Yeah. And I'm sorry, I can't remember her name at this at this point. Mm-hmm. Um, and I'm just like Jesper or something. Vesper. 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 Yeah. Vesper did, we, did we just yeah. move into a different film? Yeah. That, that's it. Became a whole separate plot, and I, I was just like, what connection is this to I, this film? I, I can I completely agree. <laughs> hey, I was actually able to forgive it somewhat, mainly because I still even with that half hour or that extra half hour, I still like that extra half hour. And what the hell is he doing? <laughs> <laughs> Ignore the man behind the smartphone. Anyway, but. Like it's I said, EQ. it drags on too. It drags on a half an hour too long, but I like that extra half hour. But can I, but I can understand why some people might not. So, anyway, that's my overly long opinion. Go, on. <laughs> yeah, Go ahead, Tyler. Well, I guess I will be a dissenter. Oh. Um, I would say that if you're a Bond, if you're a Bond fan, uh, it's definitely worth the money. But as just like a casual so, viewer, I would say it's worth the wait. Hmm. Interesting. Okay. 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 Amber, what did you think? As a casual viewer, I would say, (laughs) um, being that I'm not that big of a Bond fan, but like you're saying, like how with Casino Royale, like, you know, it is a long, and I see definitely what you're saying. That's why I think Skyfall is a little bit better than it. And Mm -hmm. I would actually, like, uh, if I had to pick, like, I would go back and see Skyfall again in the theaters where Casino Royale, once one is enough because it's so long, but like Skyfall, even though it (laughs) is long, it just keeps you invested. Mm-hmm. Um, I think just because it's it's a different it's a different type storyline that we've usually seen in a Bond film. Right. Um, mm-hmm. I can agree with that. So I think it's definitely worth. I think it's one of the better action movies, you know, that we've seen this year. Like compared to like the Bourne movie or whatever. Like it's so much. So better. so to clarify, you're on the worth the wait side or the no? Worth I'm the money saying go to oh, the okay. fucking theater. And pay okay. Your money. <laughs> <laughs> Whoa, Amber. Okay. <laughs> God, Mike. <laughs> Listen, money paying, just get back to your to Remember, your computer. Remember, I shot Bond. <laughs> this, is, this, this is why we don't let her out in the field, because she kills everyone. <laughs> but Costa then I sexual harass. I, <laughs> I, I is, I'm going to say it, it is well worth the money to go see in theaters. In fact, I'm planning on going to see it again. because I Really? Yeah, I actually, my, uh, I have a couple found hours that wanted to go see it, and I told them I'd go with them mm-hmm. for that. Same feeling. with me. My dad wants to see it. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> it, it was so, so, I, I really, really enjoyed it. It was, it was well-paced, great acting. I, I enjoyed the story. Um, you know, I, I may, I, I do like the, uh, the, the Adele song kind of, but I might end up taking like my bathroom break during that part because I was <laughs> the long opening credits. But yeah, but other than that, <laughs> I, I well, but the Bond films. Yeah, I know it is. I know. You know what? The Adele song go like even whatever people say like Adele or whatever. That song worked like yeah, really, out of it all was like good, that. Like it was a good years song. Ago, we had Madonna, it, 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 like, yeah, yeah, it is. Like, it is. In, in my opinion, it's one of it's it's one of the best Bond songs. Yeah, and, yeah, yeah, really. yeah I, I really I really like the song. It had all the classic Bond, you know. Oh, yeah. It really was. Yeah. I mean, good. for Carmel Solis again. Um, I don't even Alicia I Keys and um, what was it again? I don't, oh my god! It, I don't even remember so the opening song. Yeah, that was not. That was so. That was two people's different types of styling, styling of, of singing voices that should not be exactly. Yeah, I, just, I don't know. I, just, that, I mean, I just don't like it. I, I was just gonna say, uh, I, I, I like the imagery of the opening credits. Uh, yeah. Really 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 fantastic, really fantastic, really yeah. fantastic, yeah, fantastic. One thing I can say about the film, I really like enjoyed watching a lot of the cinematography and the colors to it. I'll, yes. I'll agree too. The cinematography was very good, very enjoyable. Good. And it included its own series of nods to previous Bond films. Yeah, uh, that was cool. okay. And and before we go any far, farther, let we're done with the spoilers now. I mean the spoiler-free the spoiler-free zone. zone. Yeah. Spoiler, we have left the spoiler-free zone. 
We now have the license to spoil. Yes! Okay, so... Yes! <laughs> so, if you were listening to the podcast, I'm sorry. Hit pause, go see the movie, <laughs> come back. Please come back, refresh the page, give us another view. Anyway, um... Oh, back again. <laughs> Alex, you, you seem very passionate. Why don't you yeah. go ahead and start, now, start us um, off here? Now, first of all, um, I am someone who has watched all the 23 Bond movies. Damn. <laughs> I'm someone who grew up watching James Bond. I have been a lifelong fan of James Bond, and I will die as a James Bond fan. <laughs> now, this movie was meant to celebrate, you know, like if, when if you if die, you... will you say shake it, not stirred? <laughs> uh, probably, yeah. Probably. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> yeah, that's that's grace, a good one. That's so. a good one. That's a good one. Yeah, that's a good one. Um, yeah, this movie was meant to celebrate the 50th anniversary of Bond. Okay, and um, I had read all the critics, you know, and you know, mm-hmm. a lot of them had said this is this is going to be the best Bond movie ever. The best, mm-hmm. you know. Jenna J- Craig is the greatest Bond and all of that. Yes, I disagree fine. with that statement. Now, fine, <laughs> fine. Now, now, first of all, um, the opening sequence of the movie uh, it was it was brilliant. Okay, mm-hmm. I, I really really enjoyed it. But then the movie fell off completely. First of all, really. First of all, <laughs> the plot was extremely 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 weak. Mm. I mean, okay, <laughs> here we're talking about um, an agent uh, played by um, an ex MI6 <laughs> agent played by Javier Bardem. Mm-hmm. Who was sent on a mission and um, M supposedly betrayed him, mm-hmm. and now, some ten, fifteen years later, he feels it worthy enough to kill an old woman. Okay. <laughs> no, listen, listen. Yeah, and here we're talking about 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 them <laughs> hacking into MI6 uh, network systems and all that. I mean, that is extremely lame. Okay, look, I disagree. the classic. No, listen, the classic Bond storylines is you have some villain, some super rich villain who has some mega evil scheme to take over the world, okay? <clears throat> that is what we know as Bond. Not some bond out MI6 agent who, 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 who wants to kill somebody he now calls mommy. For crying out loud, look, listen, it, that, that really wasn't, it, it, the plot was extremely weak f- for me. There are other things I want to talk about, but I think uh, maybe we should just give well, you a chance for me to talk about the plot. Let, you know? me, let me just reply to that. I liked the more personal take on the story because, yes. mm-hmm. uh, because like, I understand what you're seeing with the gra- what you're saying with the grand schemes and uh-huh. all that. Uh-huh. There comes a point, though, where not every single Bond story can be about a grand taking over the world theme. And what I was saying about how it, met, how it blends the Bond edginess with the old cliches, that's a cliche that I'm glad they avoided. Because the more personal storyline added for more reasons for me to care about Bond as a character, Agreed. not okay. as okay. just the okay. ploy to solve a plot. I think okay. it's also okay. that this is, this is not like... You know, this is like trying to base James Bond in a more real world setting, and in the real mm. world, not everybody wants to take over the fucking world. And there world. aren't death rates. <laughs> okay, know? okay, not, okay. But okay, for, okay. Like, it's not always have to be like, a, like I'm a billionaire and I have to, and I have this crazy scheme to uh-huh, blow up uh-huh, the world uh-huh, and uh-huh. send up money. But it's just, I liked the personal depth because we got mm. more into James Bond's. Backstory than we've okay. ever gotten any of the other. Okay, other than and that's okay. 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 okay, cool. Yeah. Okay, okay. And yeah. and real, real quickly, I'm sorry, but to add as an example to my point, even though I like the film a lot, GoldenEye's grand the grand scheme of GoldenEye was a very complicated bank robbery, which they make fun of in where they poke fun at in the film, but I sort of felt it when I watched that movie. I was like, really, this is all just to rob a bank? Mm-hmm. That's all it was. You know, but anyway, that, I was just throwing that out as my example, can, but go ahead. Can, can I just reply back? Yeah, um, yeah. Okay, um, we all know how the movie started, okay? Um, mm-hmm. there's, there's a hard drive containing the mm-hmm. list of all MI6 agents, you know, that, you know it, it gets missing and all that. Could you, could you guys tell me what happened to that hard drive? Yeah, he, he got he, it. He got it. He that got guy it was when? Working, yeah. That guy was working for Silva, uh-huh. and he gave it to Silva. And what, yeah, but, yeah, but what happens to the hard drive eventually? Silva has it. Silva has it. And still has it. And still has it. That exa- okay. So that's it's just, so right. just <laughs> now Silva. Silva. Silva got captured, right? Bond captures him midway into the movie. Mm-hmm. Supposedly captures him, but then we find out that Silva actually planned to get captured. What was the point of that? Seriously. What was the point of the Joker getting captured was... in Batman? Uh-huh. No, no, no. Listen, 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 listen. listen, listen, listen. The, the Joker. The Joker, which, which kind of like. You know, there was a lot of resemblance between Joker and, and well, Silver. You yeah. Know, but yeah. The Joker had a plan to, <laughs> you know, he, it was all about, you know, creating anarchy and, you know, mm-hmm. destruction and all that. But tell me, what was the point of Val Silver being captured? What did he to aim to close. achieve? He, to I get close he to do what? No, exactly. To the, like, he used his laptop program. and that's how, they, that's how he hacked yeah, in. Yeah, his laptop and it hacked into the program. Look, that is, that, it's, like, it's so... 
look, and started it, pulling it's stuff so, okay, out. F- okay, okay, fine. If you want to say, okay, what about the Bond girl? Okay. Well, there wasn't one. The Bond girl. No, the, the Bond girl. The Bond Which girl. one? There wasn't one. <laughs> there were, exact, th- my point, exactly. <laughs> I mean, they were claiming the, the French uh, actress. Um, um, the one oh, that the with, the, with the thing on her head? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> the, one, the one who gets good shot. Good waste of scotch. So the one, the, a good waste of scotch. Look, listen. This, <laughs> this was a Bond girl who had been sexually abused. I'm all her life, and then, and then, and then, sexual. and then, Bond. Five minutes of minute now. Bond does what? He bombs her. Okay. I have. And done. then, <laughs> and then listen, 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 listen. She's taking mm-hmm. advantage of a sex slave. Exactly. The only interaction she understands and knows is sex. Exactly. But look, listen, listen. But that's a perfect example of that. Bond is not a good person. He's Bond, not. Bond is not a good person. He's definitely no sin boy. He's definitely not that heartless. Okay. Uh-huh. Well, and my sick. biggest issue with this Bond girl is that she gets shots. She gets shot some eight minutes into the movie. It's okay, more, it's much more than eight minutes. I have nothing. It, it, like, like, I have nothing hours. to add to this. It was just. It was just, She appears. She looks all sexy, and you know, yeah, the Bond girl. She's all that. She has a discussion with Bond. Okay, Bond tells her she wants to. He wants to meet her employer. Fine, no problem. They get on this ship. What happens? She gets tied up, and next thing she gets shot. It's. I mean, uh, listen. Uh, uh, okay, I, I, I have another thing. The Bond girl is M. <laughs> Ooh. <laughs> now, now wait. Now, before you go, remember this is totally different. And you're thinking of the typical Bond girls, right? The other yeah, one we're is. speaking the cliche. And we're saying this isn't a cliche <laughs> movie. And I know you're going all crazy, but no, no, you're absolutely right. But, Amber. but M it, it calm down, is dude. throughout the entire <laughs> thing, and it and it revolves around M. And maybe you don't think like, well, she's not your typical Bond girl, but she is a woman, and it does re- revolve around her. And he does like, m- 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 like super wait, Bond grandmother. Or something and he though. does all the ordinary Bond girl things. He acts outside of his self interest and anything that's logical He's because, to save because her. of their relationship. <laughs> mm-hmm. He tries okay. to save her, doing stupid, dangerous things. These are he hits all the nor- ordinary Bond girl things, but it's not. Out of sexual love. Oh yeah, and it's at the of, end, she's it's, the closest thing he has to a mother. And at the end, you, I think I well, I haven't seen all of them, but he breaks down at the end of the movie, basically when M passes away. Spoiler, and so and I was, already in the yeah, sorry, zone. spoiler. <laughs> the yeah. thing is, mm-hmm. it, it mm-hmm. it's about mm-hmm. M. It's mm-hmm. and I think that's what shakes it differently. Why mm-hmm. it's not about some guy trying to take over the world. It's about M. Cut. So long you. Um, I'll get your opinion. <laughs> <laughs> um, I didn't have immediately something on my mind to say, but um, come on, right now, right now, right, right now. now. <laughs> um, I no. I honestly agree with what, what, what we were saying earlier about the more personal villain. I mean, mm. just because it was a nice change of pace, and that going like I said, Javier Bardem did. Excellent. That's like the type of villain he's like in No Country for Old Men. Just very personal. Yeah, visceral. <laughs> like he, it's just a very. You get an uneasy feeling from him. He's really good at that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. And he's definitely does some feeling. Right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but even though he's not out for you know global domination or anything like that, he he had all the other key points of Bond villains, like the disfigurement. Yeah. That's some, always a very the, the strange sexuality. Not, not all Bond villains, though. Well, no, but, 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 but some. But yeah. A number yeah. of them. Yeah. A lot of them have quirks. Sure. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. A lot of them sure. have Because sure. the idea is disfigurement is a sign of, I don't want to say evilness, but it, it's a reason for them to be angry. Right. <laughs> the damaged body is a symbol of their damaged mind. Yeah. Right, exactly. Yeah. Um, that and... I mean, I don't know, it definitely, because of that person, I also, you, you learn more about James Bond, because James Bond is normally just a very stoic, you know, you don't get much behind what you see mm-hmm. with, with, with James Bond. And well, and a lot of his backstory comes from the other characters. Right. Yeah, about the um, final sequence at Skyfall, I do have a very serious problem mm. with that sequence, okay? Listen, yeah, you have um, 20... Villains, okay, with 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 the helicopter as well. They're all heavily armed, trained professionals, okay. And here in this in this in this house, you have an old man, an old woman, and a bond carrying uh, a double barrel. And then which they refer to as a rifle instead of a which, shotgun. Which uh, look, yeah. Look, and, and then and then and then, of course, you know, they, you know, all all the villains get killed and all that. But then, M dying really made no sense at all because. Bond was meant to protect her, but she ended up ends up dying, which means the hero fails. fails. It, it okay. is, it is, it's, yeah, I mean, because that was an important part of the story, that he couldn't protect her. Exactly, but he was the one who made the decision to take her out of MI6, to take her to that castle. He was the one who decided not to call for any backup. 
If it was real life, he would have been arrested, okay? I don't know why he didn't call for backup, because he could have had backup. Exactly! <laughs> this, is, this is one of the... Like, there you go. It's This is one of the reasons why I really did not like But that's movie, James okay? Bond in general. He should always call for backup, but he never does. He never like, does, every, but then... Every James Bond movie <clears throat> could be simpler solved yeah. Yeah. by calling in for backup. Because for backup, he doesn't he call for backup. backup. He gets shot. Whenever <laughs> Bond always saves, Bond always saves the day. Bond always comes out on top. He it's always not, comes it's out on top. It's not a okay? reasonable thing to say he should have called for backup because you can say that about any Bond film. He should have called for backup. Yeah, but then the difference here is that in all the other Bond movies, Bond always came out on top. In this case, M dies and Bond fills. Okay. Two more Bond movies. Right. Right. Mm -hmm. I just want to say that um, I know you really didn't like them killing M. I thought uh, like. Killing them, killing off Judy Dench is, um, made me sad. But I thought it, I thought it was, yeah. I thought it was a great way to end the movie. Here's the thing: Hang, they've had what two other M's besides yeah. Judy Dench, yeah. and uh, did they ever? Three other M's. Uh, whatever. Did yeah. they ever give them a proper send off? <laughs> no. Or, okay. They they, hey, hey, here's the thing: they gave her a proper send off, and I thought that was great. On top of that. 50 years of Bond, they had to do something different, they did something different. And on top of that, like, like I don't know how the rest of you feel about this, but the fact that M dies at the end, and Bond he does technically fail. Oh, he... Uh, uh, Silva, even if he died... He'd he still achi Yeah, he won. He achieved what he was going for, and I... I know you want to say something, just hold off. <laughs> uh, but, uh, but, um, I thought that was good, just because... With Bond, in every other movie he's been in, he's always come out on top without fail. Even in Casino Royale, when his girlfriend died, and he, he still completed uh, the real mission. He did complete the real mission. Here, he didn't complete the real mission, and it, it was if it was a hollow victory, if any victory at all. Oh, and the thing I like about that is that it shows that he's not, uh, it's still this unstoppable badass that, that all the other movies have shown. It shows that he's actually human, well, and I like that. That's Daniel Craig. Daniel Craig is the only Bond to take a punch. Yeah, so, oh, and it, it goes along better with the more personal story, and I really like that, so. Yeah. It did make it more powerful, it but, it, but I did sort of feel a little bit of what you were saying, Alex. I did feel a little bit of, like, well, it's kind of deflating yeah. because, and especially and the moment. Mm -hmm. And I'm sorry because this was the most cliched moment in the whole film that she moves her hand, and of course, oh, absolutely, guess what? Yeah. She had been shot, <laughs> and now she's bleeding. That's the minute, so the minute I saw that happen, I was like, "She's gonna die!" Really? She's dead. Yeah, that's great. Yeah, that's just so. great. Well, Thanks. which one would you rather see, that or her and Javier Bardem go out together with the gun? Well, yeah. no, I think we'll <laughs> prefer the go going out on, on her. I, I, that was more, you know, I, can I just say, I, I prefer I Harvey or Bottom when, getting a knife to the back. When, so. when Bond <laughs> threw the knife into his back, I liked how long it took him to die because it's always annoyed me that people get you know, you know, hit with a knife and die instantly. And like, what is this a poison knife? Oh my God. <laughs> it no, takes a little while it's to die. Call of Duty. I know it <laughs> takes a little while to die when you've been stabbed. I mean. And then, honestly, that, that, it started to get funny, and I feel like Javier Bardem did it on purpose. Yeah. You know, it was kind of... Oh, he's uh, a bond. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> like, like, damn you! <laughs> yeah, well, especially when the minute, that hurts. The minute he I'm got hit die. by it, he didn't really, like, like yell out in pain. He went, like, he went, yeah, like, yeah, when, the yeah, Joker, yeah. like when the Joker yeah. got caught by, uh, yeah. got caught by, uh... Can Gordon? you just give me a minute? By Gordon. When yeah, by Gordon, yeah, by Gordon. And he was like... Oh, can't you just, just give him minutes? minutes? <laughs> I think he felt the same thing. Like he got hit in the night and he was like, "Come on!" I was so close to killing her. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Like yeah, that yeah. close. Yeah. Well, yeah. I, yeah. I, 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 and honestly, it was probably better. That yeah, way. probably. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Look, listen. I, I just want to say some some good things about the movie. Because, <laughs> because I, well, you know, I, yeah. I mean, I've I've, I've you know been, been very very yeah. critical of it. Um, first of all, for the very first time, I actually laughed at the Daniel Craig Bond movie. I mean, well. Yeah, <laughs> you know, there were several instances where he cracked jokes. You know, he, he talked about uh, M's uh, the the doll thing, yeah. saying the whole building goes up and that bloody thing survives. You know, <laughs> <laughs> you know there, there, there were some really there were some really good when lines. He you know, ejector from the car. <laughs> <laughs> exactly, exactly. You know, so I mean, he brought they brought back some Bond humor, mm -hmm. which we've always known Bond you know mm -hmm. to have. Uh, the opening sequence was 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 wonderful. It was one of the best I've ever seen. Mm -hmm. And um, also for the very first time, we actually got some insight into how Bond. You know, Thanks. how he grew up, you know, having been the old Skyfall thing and all of that. Uh, Javier Bardem playing well, Silver, I think he was excellent. But unfortunately, he had limited screen time. 
I just think, you know, he didn't have enough time on screen. Um, um, just to, I liked the one comment that a friend of mine made on Facebook when I finally came, we finally came home. I mean, I got home at like 1.30 in the morning that day. <laughs> and, uh, and he posted basically saying, um, uh, No Country for 007 was a great movie. <laughs> 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 because the minute that Javier Bardem appeared on screen and started, even that first long track. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. I, love yeah. That. I love that. I, 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 did, I did like that. The I, did like I remember watching that. I was like, I just <laughs> zoom the fucking camera in on his face already. I want to see this guy. Yeah, and, and the minute the minute he got closer, I was like, wow. He <laughs> is just, he, the, you, can pull, you can put him right into... No country for old men. Nobody knows the difference. I was just like, difference. who, like, dress, like, who's your stylist? <laughs> that, I just want to know. I mean, he, the hair. The hair. But yeah, blonde hair. hair. Yeah. That, I mean, ugh. he, that's the thing. Do you like, like my white suit? suit? I think it's very <laughs> fabulous. That, that, that one long <laughs> shot all in one thing, it just, like, builds <laughs> up the tension. You like, you zoom in on his face. Mm -hmm. They were all that build up. Yeah, it was you know, a lot right. of build up. But, uh, it's just while I was watching that, I kept getting, like, more and more anxious. Well, and the other thing, too, is that not only... But even though, the, the weird thing is, even though he is different from other Bond villains in that he's <coughs> not out to, you know, destroy the world or take over the world, and he's not, he like, super rich. He has a very specific goal. He, he has a very specific goal, but he's also a lot alike, though, because his appearance would remind me of some Bond villains. Like, yeah, like, the blonde hair remnants of, like, Goldfinger. Yeah. You know, and also just the way he dressed, very kind his of, like, mannerisms. his mannerisms. Yeah, I mean, flamboyant. so yeah, he flamboyant yeah, and a little bit of you know homoeroticism. In right, there. so yeah. not so he he was like old Bond villains, but not at the same time. Yeah, you know, and it was a good combination, which is why I think he works perfectly. Yeah. Right, right. One thing. Yeah, yeah, that's true. Sorry. Yeah. One thing uh, I also want to say is that um, I think he also worked even better as a Bond villain since in Quantum of Solace, if any of you remember, Dominic Green, the villain of that movie. Mm -hmm was quite possibly the lamest yeah. main <laughs> Bond yeah. villain I have ever seen. Oh, yeah, he, was. So, he just uh, seemed like a guy, just a guy who yeah. was like getting other people to he, do all this bad stuff and, for him. And there was nothing unique to him. There wasn't anything unique to what he was doing. It's just right. like, like, I am going to take over this country so I can steal their water. <laughs> or, or it's like, what? Yeah, <laughs> and, because but, that was the plot. Yeah, yeah so, right. but seeing Silva in this movie was like after Green was in Solace, it was just so much, so much more satisfying to see a, an actually good move a villain as a, mm -hmm. in Bond for once, for in a while, so. Um. Yeah, go ahead. Um, I don't know if we're gonna talk about Q, the new. Q. Uh, the new yeah. Q. What, what do you think? Um, I, I didn't like him. Really? <laughs> look, look, okay. Look, um, I'm sorry. Once Something again, I'm going back to my old self and all that. You don't like Sander? Look, look, <laughs> listen, look, look, look listen. Um, if you guys. See M has been um, like a, a mommy figure to to Bond. Mm. Hugh has always been a fatherly figure to Bond. Mm. Okay, if you watch the Bond movies, the Sean Connery era, with Jamal, George Lazenby, Timothy Dalton, and even Pierce Brosnan, mm. Hugh was meant to be like this fatherly figure that gives him advice. Okay, always you know. Now you bring in some high school. Mm. Student, you know, college mm -hmm. student with, with spots on his face. I mean, look, listen. <laughs> <laughs> no one, no one is ever going to, um, you know, play the role of of Q. Uh, as good as Desmond Lumin did, mm -hmm. right. but then you could always bring in somebody a bit more mature, somebody a bit older, you know, to play the role. They, so, th yeah, they know, threw I, away I, the I, idea. I agree that like he felt too like young and I like that. They, really they, they threw away the idea, but, but like to really be like in like this kind of like high up position, you know. I, I'm ha I'm halfway between that because you are right. Q is supposed to be a position of like great intelligence, and not only that, you would think intelligence. And maturity, so mm -hmm. you would think that you know, like how you thought of the old Q, old Q, because you know they said like you know they mentioned about you know we don't do exploding pens anymore. That how was, do you know? You're a kid. Also, that what was really mean? useful <laughs> that one time. But you know what? That that exchange between them in the gallery, yeah. I thought was really good because it Bond oh, does yeah. go like, "What good. are you?" Like right, he's like, right, like or, right. you know, and I think and but it was a good thing because he was just sitting there very laid back and he's like, "Here's your stuff." And he's like, "Try and bring it back in one piece." Yeah, like I, right, which yeah, was a I, great, you know, usually I, you, I, yeah. Yeah. yeah, I like the new Q, you know, but like I can see, I can definitely see what you're saying because the old Q definitely was like kind of uh, father or like mm -hmm. sort of 
elderly hey, mentor figure to the old Bond, and I was a little disappointed to see they kind of threw out that angle in favor of like sort of uh, here's your new pesky younger brother. But you know, right, so. this is just his first movie. I say give him a chance because he's oh, only, I'll definitely he, give he him only, a chance. I mean, so. he was only in it for a, for just a little bit. Very so got little. Him, and then he fucked up. He, and he, and then he fucked up. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. Right? He gets hacked. Yeah. 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 Love. Nobody hacks Q. Like, yeah. I'm yeah. 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 I, oh, yeah. the entire Nobody time. I, as soon as I saw the Ethernet cable. I leaned over to Costa and said, he's about to fuck up. <laughs> yeah, the, the entire, well, the, he's young, though. When, <laughs> exactly. Okay, you know. yeah. When I... When he got hacked, the entire time, I kept the... I kept hoping, like, for, um... For what's his name? The new M, uh, Ralph. What's his last Fins, name? Fine. Fins. 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 I kept hoping for the entire time for Ralph. Uh, Find his whatever. Just say Ralph. Uh, Ralph, <laughs> Ralph <laughs> to come in and say you fucked up on your first day on the job, kid. You're fired. I was, I was hoping that would happen. But whatever. <laughs> okay. It's like I knew we should have hired the old guy. The old guy <laughs> instead. Yeah. Um. But uh. Yeah, no, I mean, like I said, I'm halfway on cue because, you know, he does seem like he's in a higher position than Bond. Like, he, isn't he supposed to be, like, somewhere relative to M's position? No, he's not. Well, M's well, is well, 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 according to the kid boss, that but... he can do everything that Bond can do in, like, in, in like a few minutes. Well, on his <laughs> laptop, though. Yeah, on yeah, his laptop. He can't... I don't think he can fire a gun. I, I, well, I, I love that. And, and, watch, watch, that's an, and watch, that's an aspect they'll probably exploit in the next few films, I would too, hope, because he's young. I would hope not. I would, like, just keep him in the lab, and yeah. you send him out like he did, and again, he gives him his stuff and be like, trying not to fuck it up and yeah, bring but it back to me. Yeah, but depending on, you know, where they take the story from here and where yeah. it goes from here, I'm you got to bet that a kid that young, you know, a guy that young, you know, it's, it's sort of like the 24 effect. Yeah, I mean, if you've watched uh. 24... For, you know, eventually the characters that you don't expect to get involved in, to get involved yeah. in the terrorist type situation, they end up getting involved somehow. And how they react to it is an interesting, you know, character study. Mm -hmm. um, so I can't, I can't like discount the possibility that they'll probably do it. Look what they did with M. You know, they made her like, you know... Uh, um, near the end of the movie, they made her like a killing machine almost. She well, was lighting she, up the. Yeah, she's part of MI6, though, so you don't know what her background is. Yeah, she was right, probably right, in the she's SAS. She's probably an agent. Okay, okay yeah, but, but, yeah. but in the same aspect, though, in what previous Bond film have you seen M go do out anything. to the field never, never, and do never, anything never, besides never. sit behind a desk and then yell at Bond? Well, in, in, when uh, have we ever in, seen in, uh, uh, anybody go after M like exactly, that before? Exactly. Oh, okay. In the world okay, of yeah. but, that's, but that's my point. Why wouldn't they do the same thing with Q? Who, a guy who's much younger and who is a much different personality because than M and who doesn't have the training that M has, he so it would be have weaker a gun that's in the field. Tech to his fingerprints to shoot. Well, right, okay. that's, what, that's what I'm saying. That, gun, is, that gun was um, cool, except the glowing lights. You're, you're Matthew James Bond, and you're trying to be all sneaky, and you're about to kill this guy, and then three green lights light up Glow on the back the of your gun, gun, and suddenly everyone can see you. It doesn't matter, he's James Bond. Can I just correct you about that gun? Um, after, you know, the bad guy tries to use you it, never gets it back. Yeah, <laughs> exactly, <laughs> exactly, exactly. But, but no, 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 because that's, because that's the whole point, is that Bond always, always takes new stuff, and he always and, brings and he never it. Turns it back. Exactly. That, that's exactly. the point. Like, yeah. That's yeah. Right. Exactly. absolutely mm -hmm. the point. The radio makes it back. Mm -hmm. with, yeah, all the, like. with all the references they kept making to previous Bond movies, the entire time, whenever Q was on screen, I was really hoping he'd just say, grow up, 007, and especially, <laughs> especially since he's younger this time, uh. and, but then uh, what he, he never did. I'm like, maybe the next one. <laughs> so. You, you kind of have to pick and choose your references. That was yeah. okay. One thing that I actually thought of as we were talking, um, first of all, I did sort of have a little bit of a logical flaw with the whole tunnel system. First of all, they said take the tunnel to the chapel. That tunnel only leads like... Leads uh, into a uh, field. Like, like it leads only into like a quarter of a mile away from the building. It doesn't even go that when, far. When they first come out of the tunnel, it looks like they only went like about 30 feet. So. Yeah, yeah, they were that far out. And I'm like... Do they know that if the villains turn around, they would spot them? Yeah, it's like so right there. Just, just enough to go underneath no, and, and them. Then right, but they were paying attention to the fire. The fire no, was part of the attraction. And, and then here's the, but then here's another logical flaw. He should have been using flaw. a flashlight, though. That's what <laughs> I was just about to say. Why do you need to use the flashlight? What is there that you can't see? There's, to there's walk enough over? fucking fire it's there. It's a field. <laughs> it's a field. I, everybody else was able to walk through, no problem. And <laughs> well, they're old. So, also, yeah. also, yeah. also, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. also, it became night. Instantly. It was 
late afternoon, and then suddenly it was night. Mm. Well, it goes like that. Well, it's it. It's right. 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 I felt it's terrible it. when they machine gunned that car because even though it wasn't real, <laughs> that car in real life is worth a few million I d- dollars. And you, they show a <laughs> shot of James Bond like seeing his car, and you feel like, oh, he's mad. <laughs> Go ahead. Go ahead. Start. What do you? What did you give? This yeah, movie? I'm giving it uh, a six. A uh, six out of Ooh. ten. Um, That's harsh. <laughs> I'm giving it a six out of ten. Um, that's a D. That's a D. Yeah, like, that's like, yeah, like you said. <laughs> look, look, listen, like, like wow, you said. Bond, wow, Bond really didn't pass yeah, this look, test. Yeah, <laughs> look, look, listen, listen. Talk, yeah, just, 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 just to uh, quickly summarize. Um, I gave it a six because I'm speaking, uh, you know, like, like I said earlier, I, I grew up watching Bond movies. You know, uh, it's, it's, it's a character that I'm very, very, very. Um, and dear towards you. And um, like I said, Bond was celebrating the 50th anniversary this year. This movie was meant to be the best Bond movie of all time, and it did not live up to my expectations. So, is it good? Yeah. Okay, go ahead, Steve. Uh, unlike you, I wasn't expecting this to be the best Bond movie of all time. So, um, especially after Quantum of Solace, my expectations were much lower. And <laughs> so I wasn't disappointed. And um, we're giving it an out of 10 score. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Hey, so anyway, um, given a score, I'd probably say eight out of ten. So. Okay. Tyler. Um, I go with uh, seven out of ten. Seven. Uh, <clears throat> no, like I said earlier, like to uh to me, someone more casual, uh, it didn't really like hit anything, and it's quite possible that in like a few <clears throat> weeks, I just, you know, it just it just be like more forgettable for me. So, just give it an average score. Okay. Fair enough. I loved it. <laughs> <laughs> okay, then what do you give it out of I, ten? Then? I would just give it ten out of ten because I wow, haven't seen wow. I haven't seen that many Bond That's movies before. But you. out of That's out it. of the Daniel Craig movies, out of those three, it's the best. And I'll, I'll and then really Casino agree. Royale is right there. I completely it. agree. So um, I uh, there you go. And I think it's one of the more interesting action movies this year. The top one of the top action movies. So yeah. Okay. I wouldn't give it a ten, but I would give it a, a solid nine. I, I, solid nine. I have a solid, nine. Solid. Solid. <laughs> solid nine. Instead of a weak nine. You know, you know I, I thoroughly enjoy it. I honestly think Skyfall is probably <coughs> the best movie I've seen this year. Wow. Mm. Wow. Wow. Mm. That's, that's a... Oh, ah, ha, ha. A, okay. <laughs> that one, no, uh, it wasn't even any of that. I just said, wow, and these two repeated me. <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead, Tanner. What I'm going to give it 009 stars out of 10. <laughs> really? So and like, Tyler, you blew your chance with the 7 out of 10. Double 7, seven out of 10. Because <laughs> I really. Oh, oh I'm oh, sorry, Tyler. His, his face just sinks. Because <laughs> I, I really enjoyed that movie. And, and um, I really enjoyed that movie. I would see it again. Um. <clears throat> Hopefully, more Bond. The more Bond movies will be in this same vein. Um, I will go on and agree. With <laughs> you that. see this guy's face? Oh, it, he seems oh. like cringing when you <laughs> say that. <laughs> more well, six out of ten. No. Well, sir, we disagree. Well, uh, uh, well you disagree. No. I'm gonna make you cringe a little bit more because, like I said at the beginning, I do think it's one of the best Bond films. I've seen probably the best. I walked out of the theater thinking I have not witnessed a Bond film better than that. And to uh, to be fair, I haven't seen all of them. I've seen Thank a good you. collection of them, Thank and that's so I'll give you that. But of all the ones that I've seen, okay. I called the best one. Okay. I thought it was a good combination, like I said, of the edginess from Casino Royale that they were trying to establish in Casino Royale. I think they finally got it in they this did. film. That finally clicked. Uh, Daniel Craig as Bond didn't really sell me up until this point. Mm. Once I saw this film, I was like. You know what? Okay, Daniel Craig's okay, and I, I always, I always thought that Pierce Brosnan was the best representation of the Bond character, but I'm gonna put Daniel Craig as like you know the best actor to be portraying Bond for these films I think for this he's the type best of film. Um, so as a rating, I would give it a nine out of ten. Sorry, man, I, mean, I made you cringe a little a good bit more. Movie. I, I thought it's it was a good, good movie. Good I thought movie. it was one of the better films this year, and um, it should get nominated one, for something. I, I'm not going to go that far. Maybe cinematography. Maybe cinematography. I mean, not like stuff. acting and stuff Definitely like that. Definitely not CGI, because that... Oh, yeah, yeah. The, the, the effects in that CGI movie were was terrible. a little bit terrible. Yeah. I, I'll give you that. Honestly, I, I could have done The explosion of MI6, when I, when I saw it, I was oh, like, yeah. wow, I could have done that. Yeah, that was cool. Cinematography-wise? I think Javier Bardem is going to get... 
a nomination for best supporting actor. And, and, and he and he, and he, and he, deserves he won't win he because Holly because the, they won't respect the. No, they won't. Um, but and he had limited screen time, so. Yeah, yeah, yeah but even then, though, you can still give him the credit that he deserves. Right, he he'll, he'll get noticed for it definitely. All right, so well, thanks for joining everybody. Thank you. Uh, th I thought this was very very productive. <laughs> <laughs> so and thank you guys, everybody, for listening. Um, remember, if you want to find us on Facebook, it's UMBC Filmmakers Anonymous. On YouTube, it's the search the username UMBCFA. On Twitter, it's at UMBCFA. Downloadable episodes at groovespaces.com/slash filmmakersanonymous. Thanks for joining us. Come back next week. <laughs>